It's been a long time since the last upload on the Airplane Productions, and do check out the EFAN X video if you haven't already done so. It is an interesting video covering an interesting project by Airbus, with them striving to reduce carbon emissions. But while electrification is a great way to go in the future, transporting more people around the world with lower carbon emissions, taking a step back, what other cleaner technologies has the aviation industry developed? Well, we'll find out in this aviation documentary. But before we do, a warm welcome back to the Airplane Productions, the home for epic comparisons, detailed analysis, and new aviation content to come. Aviation has come a long way since its early days. Once a niche form of transport only for the wealthy, most of the world's population now depend heavily on metal birds to travel from A to B, whether it be for leisure, business or other purposes. With the middle class only expected to grow and demand for air travel only expected to rise further, there is however growing concerns about the impact of flying on the environment, not least with the next generation of people increasingly aware of carbon emissions and the impacts of climate change. But how then did so many people get to fly for less? And with demand for air travel constantly on the rise, would protection of the environment and carbon emission reductions hinder further growth in the aviation industry? Well, the answer is, by simple logic at least, it would, if it wasn't for the breakthrough technologies in aircraft design and manufacturing that decreased the cost of flying and increased efficiency of flights around the world. Aircraft design has evolved since early days, with new technologies such as weight reductions leading to incremental efficiency improvements. However, there are some rupture technologies that have contributed most to the impressive fuel economy of aircraft today. For your knowledge, between 1960s and 2014, the aviation industry has emitted about the same amount of carbon emissions, but has carried four times the number of revenue-paying passengers. Air traffic has quadrupled since the 1960s, but the total carbon emissions have remained about the same. This shows just how efficient the latest generation of aircraft have become, reducing their carbon emissions while increasing their fuel efficiency. If you have been watching the Airplane Productions channel for some time, you may know that we have compared all aircraft from different size and range categories. And from those videos, you probably derive that the aviation industry is highly driven by competition. Competition between aircraft manufacturers, i.e. mostly Airbus and Boeing, play a huge role in moving the aviation industry forward towards a more sustainable one, with new white bodies like the A350 and 787 burning 25% less fuel than the aircraft they replace. Even on the short haul, new re-engined aircraft like the NEO or Boeing's MAX are reducing fuel burn by 15% compared to aircraft with older generation of engines. The improvement in airline operating procedures also drive low carbon emissions and fuel costs, which combined with the developments on the product side is what drives this aviation industry to becoming leaner in its carbon footprint. Today, we will steer away from talking about specific products and talk more broadly about breakthrough new technologies that each product has brought to the aviation industry. Compared to the first generation airplanes, much has changed in many areas. The biggest source of fuel? The engines. In the early days, aircraft were powered by straight jets, where all the air entering the engines passed through the compressor and was heated up. 
This produced the thrust necessary for high-altitude, high-speed flying of the first generation of jet aircraft, but also burned a lot of unnecessary fuel. Furthermore, this technology had a thrust limit before the engine would become too inefficient. As the size of aircraft grew, more thrust was needed, but simply injecting more fuel into the core would cause the range of any aircraft to take a hit. And that was when Pratt & Whitney came up with a revolutionary technology that sparked the reinvention of jet engines even till now. Rather than having all the air go straight into the core on their new JT-90 engine at a time, some air would actually flow around the core. While the air will not be heated up, it will still be compressed, increasing the amount of thrust without increasing the fuel burn. This engine is now known as the turbofan engine and will first power the Boeing 747. Obviously, this turbofan technology itself has seen improvements in leaps and bounds, with higher and higher bypass and pressure ratios, enabling similar amounts of thrust to be produced while reducing the fuel injection, allowing for lower fuel burn. The highest pressure ratios of jet engines today can reach 61 to 1 for the latest GE9X compared to only 1.2 to 1 for the very earliest jet engines on any aircraft. Obviously, to achieve higher bypass and pressure ratios, a larger fan will be needed to suck more air into the engine. But again, a bigger fan diameter will lead to more weight. Early jet engines were constrained in their maximum fan diameter to a point where the fan was too heavy to be efficient. However, new materials have been developed since then, with the General Electric GE90115B engines being the first engines to utilize a new material in constructing fan blades, carbon fiber. This material is stronger, reducing maintenance costs of the engine while also lighter, increasing the efficiency and allowing the engine to grow to bigger sizes. The GE90 is the predecessor to the new GE9X engine, which is now the largest jet engine in the world with a fan diameter of 134 inches. All this thanks to new, lighter, stiffer and harder materials. These materials aren't only used in engine parts, but have also made their way to more and more airframe parts. Weight. Weight is the enemy of any aircraft. The more weight an airplane has to lug into the air, the more the energy required, which results in more fuel needed. To reduce weight, manufacturers have simplified designs through new materials and new systems. Initially used only on certain parts like the horizontal tail stabilizer, new composite materials have made their way to major parts such as wings and fuselage sections. The first new airplane to heavily increase utilizations of carbon composite is Boeing's new 787 Dreamliner, the first new airplane of the 21st century. On the newest white body, the A350, over 50% of airframe parts are advanced materials, ranging from carbon composites to titanium, in turn reducing fuel burn. Compared to an aircraft of similar range and size it is designed to replace, the A350 burns 25% less fuel. Besides more advanced materials, flight control systems have also gotten more advanced yet less complex. Early aircraft utilize simple pulleys and cables to control their flight control surfaces. As the weight of aircraft increased, more and more electronic motors were added to aid pilots. However, these added weight and complexity which lowers fuel efficiency while raising maintenance costs. Modern airliners today wouldn't fly so easily and efficiently if it wasn't for perhaps the biggest innovation to come in the aviation industry yet. And yet, this big contribution to the aviation industry comes from a relatively modest aircraft, one that has also become the most popular aircraft in the aviation industry. I am of course talking about the A320 and its breakthrough fly-by-wire system, which not only reduced the cost of flying but added new safety features never found before on any previous aircraft. An example of this is the flight envelope protection we take for granted now. Flight envelope protection prevents the aircraft from getting into dangerous 
dangerous situations while reducing pilot workloads in tricky environments. The A320 was the first passenger aircraft to utilize flyback wire, which combined with its advanced engines made it 25% more fuel efficient compared to other aircraft of its class at the time. Besides more extensive utilization of computers in flight control systems, the way aircraft is being designed has also been digitalized, with new computer 3D modeling being used to formulate the structure of the aircraft. This allows for quicker and easier changes to the design of an aircraft if needed, while time taken to develop new aircraft is also reduced. Computer designs also allow increased flexibility to engineers, allowing them to constantly tweak and quickly refine the design. This allows the final product to be more fuel efficient, safer, and also closer to performance guarantees promised to airline customers. One of the most successful widebody aircraft ever, the Boeing 777, was also the first to completely use 3D modeling in its design phase. It quickly went on to become one of the best-selling widebodies of all time and inspired future new designs to be drawn up with a computer. However, digitalization goes far beyond purely design, with increased use of digital solutions now present in final assembly lines and even when the aircraft is flying. Airbus, one of the pioneers of digitalizations along with Boeing, has most recently rolled out its Skywise platform, collecting data from its passenger airplanes when flying with customers. This data collected is used to anticipate any potential problems with the aircraft and iron them out with predictive maintenance. This increases efficiency for airlines operating the type and improves the airplane's operational performance. Small incremental innovations not only have to come on the product side, but also on the way these products are operated, and Airbus has even more ambitious plans up its sleeve. In January of 2020, Airbus announced big strides in their newest initiative, the Fellow Fly Project. After studying how birds migrate from A to B, Airbus learned the benefits of aircraft when they fly in a similar formation. By mimicking the way birds fly, Airbus claims that future flights could save up to 10% of fuel combined. How then would it work? Well, aircraft would fly in a V-shaped formation, one behind the other, and the following aircraft will be able to benefit from the wake turbulence left behind by the leading aircraft, in turn reducing its drag and increasing its fuel efficiency. Technology such as this is a breakthrough and has high growth potential, as Airbus claims there's no theoretical limit to the number of aircraft that can fly in formation. While still a new and untested concept, this will definitely transform the way we fly and will deliver step change in efficiency over the long term. Of course, with new and more advanced technologies always on the horizon, aviation will strive towards being even cleaner. New technologies that bring breakthrough value will continue to be developed, pushing emission reductions to even lower levels. But with more intense pressure coming in from many stakeholders, the airplane productions would emphasize the important need for this industry to move faster in its pursuit of developing these future technologies, to ensure that more people will truly be able to fly for less in the foreseeable future of our aviation world. Thanks for watching till the end of this more philosophical based detailed aviation analysis and do stay tuned for more on the way as well as some great epic comparisons. Do consider subscribing so you won't miss out on any of those. In the meantime, till we meet next time, as ever wishing you a truly clear sky ahead.